Hey everybody, Ben, Somerville Gardener. And today is part two of the backyard walk around. And as Hurricane Helene goes barreling down at Tallahassee, Florida, I'm gonna be stepping out and in and out in between the little uh, waves of rain. And when I say waves of rain, uh, we're not even at a quarter of an inch at this point. It's just constantly spitting at us. So for this side of the tour, I'm going to start right here at the back door where I'm gonna talk a bit about cannas which my cannas are looking pretty bad. Since it's been a few weeks since I've really been able to get out here and do a whole lot, the leaf rollers have pretty well destroyed my cannas. And if you're not familiar with what leaf rollers are, they're basically the larva of a moth that lays a few rounds of silk around the leaf as it first emerges, and then the little wormy guy goes inside of the leaf, nice and warm and protected, and nice and moist, and proceeds to suck all the juices out of your leaves. And then you're left with this mess right here, which honestly is pretty easy to solve. All you really need to do is just take a knife for your fingers and pull the leaf apart. Let me see if I can find a good one. Here's one right here. You can see it just lays a few little lines of silk going across, and all you gotta do is break those things open and unfurl your leaf, and inside you get the little wormy guy right there. Oh, he's got a few buddies. And once you pull these guys out, squish them just a little bit, they are gone. That's what they look like, right there. And that's what's pretty well got all of my cannas uh, looking like. Well, it's looking pretty bad. For my future plantings over here, I've got a nice little goji berry that is being, being nursed back to health. Got a few flowers on it. It actually had a few berries on it when I got it, but they were really sickly looking. As you can see here, it's got a lot of dead that's gonna have to be cut off of that. I have never had goji berries before, so I'm kind of curious to see what they taste like. Next to the goji berry is the red Malaysian guava right there. Still have one more guava that I'm waiting on. And these other two guavas here are a lemon and a strawberry, and I don't remember which one is which at this point. I'm gonna say the smaller one is the lemon, I think. And about a month ago, I did the uh, transplanting of the edible ginger here from the grocery store. It's looking pretty okay. Would be doing a whole lot better if it had gotten watered a lot more regularly, but sometimes you just can't get out and water things every day. And speaking of watering, this loquat right here looks like it has seen some better days. This specific loquat was never really doing all that well, but the lack of rain that we've had and my lack of watering, well, let's just say that didn't help. And moving on around here, we've got the taro, the elephant ears right here, and some Awapui ginger and some lotus ginger right here next to the path. I really do like these lotus ginger flowers. And it looks like the other ones that I planted over here are still thriving or at least surviving. At this point, surviving is about all I can hope for. The Violet de Bordeaux fig has lots of figs going on it. I'm not sure how edible these are gonna be, being its first year and all, but I am hopeful. The papaya ring is kind of interesting. Some of the papayas have only grown just a little bit, while other ones have gotten quite tall. Bit of a comparison of the papayas going around the circle here. With that big old parent papaya, it's probably about four feet tall right about now. Nice big healthy leaves, looking good. One of the things I am kind of surprised about is the, uh, let's see, this is a, uh, which one is this? This is the Cara Cara orange right here. It has decided to put out a bunch of flowers. Oh, hey, hey there, little guy. I'm not sure if you see that, but there's an anole lizard just poking his head out and uh, was looking at me right in the middle of the flowers. Where'd you go, buddy? There he is. Yep, got an anole lizard just hanging out right there in my tree. That's kind of cool to see the little lizards poking around everywhere. Oh, it looks like there's even more flowers going to be over here. Looks like there's going to be a few more flowers poking up right there. Oh, and here's another thing that I just saw. That is a, I think that's a swallowtail a caterpillar right there. Uh, kind of ugly little things. Looks like bird poop. But that is a caterpillar for a nice pretty butterfly. I did see a bunch of those as I was walking around on a few of the others that I'll be pointing out here in just a second. And my... Well, it's a sour orange. It's not gonna be a very good one, but I've just let them just eat that thing up and that's fine. I'm not eating that thing anyway. That one's an experiment for the future. So I can graft different types of oranges to that one tree and have a, uh, a cornucopia of oranges on the same tree. It's gonna be cool. Make sure you like and subscribe to, to see all those updated videos. And oddly the Moro blood orange here, at least I think it's a blood orange. Yep, that is the Moro blood orange there. Um, still trying to figure this one out. It, it's only growing like half. Like, I, I don't get why this half has grown and this half has not. Kind of interesting from overhead. You can see how it just kind of flares out to the north part of the yard and the southern part is just 
nothing. But I guess that's just how it is sometimes. And over here up next to the trailer, I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to get it out of here, is the other Kara Kara Orange, which looks like it's seen some better days. What is going on here? Yeah, it looks like something's been munching on it. Yeah, it looks like we got some sooty mold. Yeah, more mold going on. Might need to get some copper spray for that. It'll clear it up, hopefully. Or it'll be fine. It'll be, it'll just, just, it'll be fine. And back over here, yep, that's what I thought. I've seen a lot of these guys. And there's another one of the caterpillars right there. I've seen quite a few of them just chomping and eating this thing like crazy. And that's fine. That's what it's for. It's for the wildlife. Give them something to eat. But this is a sour orange rootstock. And this used to be the Sanguinelli orange that, uh, yeah, it kind of died off. I need to, to just get all this dead off of here. I'm gonna let it grow up to about here or so. And then I'm going to cut this off so that it can give me lots of, ow, wow, that's a really sharp thorn. Ooh, buddy. So yeah, I'm gonna let this thing branch out a bunch. Might even cut it here and here so that it branches a bunch. And then I will start uh, grafting all kinds of other branches to it from some of the many other trees that are out here. Maybe put a lime on it, maybe put some mandarin orange branch on it, maybe some kara kara and moros. Maybe find a few other branches of other citrus trees to go ahead and graft to it and just have a bunch of different citrus on the same tree. I think it's kind of a cool idea. Working my way around, the Little Miss Figgy has given me all kinds of Little Miss Figgies. I do see that we've had a little bit of a, a moldy and rotty uh, problem here. I'm still trying to learn how to do my fig trees. Yeah, if anybody's got any suggestions on what to do with rotting stuff, let me know. Comments. Work back around to the other side, and this is the Powder Blue Blueberry. Looks like we've got a little bit of growth here. That's good to see. Like to see new growth on that. And my Bell of Georgia Peach, it is not dying, which is saying something because this along with quite a few others during the uh, last tropical storm we had, did uh, drown and uh, not all of them came back. You know, we'll get to that here in a minute. But this one is starting to pop back just a little bit. And I saw that, yeah, how many people have peach trees thrown off peaches in September, the end of September. I think today's the 26th. Yeah, it is 26. And I've got peaches just now starting to grow. It's crazy, but that's not the only thing crazy. Stick around, we're getting crazier, but not just yet. Here is the, which one is this? This is, ooh, we got a bee or something right there. I wonder what that guy is. I don't know, we're just gonna leave him alone though. He looks busy. Okay, so this is the Brown Select Satsuma with the uh, weird looking bee looking thing in there. Um, I don't know what's going on with this thing. It hasn't really grown but it also hasn't died. So that's a good thing. I mean, at least it hasn't died yet. Yet. Oh, don't say that. Coming along our fake retaining wall thing here, we've got the uh, spearmint, which looks like it's about to flower and it's gonna throw its seeds all over this hill, I hope, and go ahead and start spreading a bunch of spearmint over here. Then there's the lemon balm, which we're hoping it does the same thing, just letting it run wild on this hill. I do believe this just, it got way too dry. Uh, I really don't like it when I have to just not water anything even for a while because I, these are just kind of sick, sadly looking, is what it is sometimes. Uh, the sweet mint, uh, yep, got more flowers going here. Go ahead and seed and go crazy wild. And my citronella, um, I'm not sure that's gonna come back from that. That's looking kind of rough. And again, another sweet mint, seeding real well. Lemon balm, it's not dying. And it's not really, you know, shooting out any runners or anything either. But this one here is definitely, this uh, spearmint right here, definitely throwing out lots of runners. Going all the way out here. Where's it go? All the way to here. Let's see if I can get that all in one shot. So all the way out to here, throwing runners out. All over the place. Go, buddy, go. Yep, that thing can go ahead and run and go crazy wild all over here. Go ahead and run back down the hill here. I really don't care what that thing does. If that entire hill gets filled up with mint and... Lemon balm, I'm okay with that because that's what it's there for. And proceeding past these row of cannas, there's the blackberries here. These are the, don't tell me what these are. These are Prime Arc Freedom. Three of them, one, two, and three. And I thought I had some blackberries on one of these. I thought I saw, saw from some flowers. They are looking pretty good. Lots of nice green growth. Uh, not too much disease going on here, but you know, some. Looks like some, we started with munching in here. Got a good lunch out of that one. This middle one here, we have been picking some off and have gotten some fruits here on this one already. 
for the uh, the fall season. Uh, probably, I don't know, 10 or 15 of them have already come off and gotten eaten. And I cannot wait to eat some of these. Ooh, don't those look good? Got some big old clusters of berries right there. One of the odd things that I've got going on is my flowers are like splitting in half. Hopefully you can see that real well. They're splitting in half and giving me like two separate berries right here. They otherwise taste really good, really sweet, really juicy, really nice blackberries. I just don't know why some are staying whole like this and others are splitting into V's like this. Not sure why. And my third little guy down here has restarted growing and it looks like he's gonna survive, I hope. Ooh, well, that's not good. We got snails. All right, buddy. Yep, got, got some snails. That's here, let's safely put him right down over there. And behind the blackberries is an old hammy bamboo. I got this from that really big bamboo place down in West Palm, Florida. I can almost think of the full name of it, but if you look up West Palm Bamboo, there's a really big bamboo farm down there and they have a ton of bamboo that you can go look at. I think they do mail order also. I just went down there. And I do have a bamboo planting video from a couple months ago if you want to check that out, uh, how I mounted these up and planted these. This is the first shoot that this one actually put out and it's going on about three feet tall. Very excited about that bamboo growing up and getting some nice big canes out of that one. And here's the one I can't believe. This right here was only not even knee high at the beginning of the spring and it's going up to almost shoulder level now. So here's the loquat that I bought to be as a bush, and this thing has five different stems down here. Hopefully you can see these. Five different stems, and it's growing up nice and big and tall. I probably won't get any loquats off of it this next year, but the year after that, I should get a lot of loquats going there. And now the one thing that I have a really hard time believing, this is my plum tree. This is a Santa Rosa plum that I thought was dead when we had that last tropical storm come through. Absolutely drowned within a day of the tropical storm starting. It was inundated with water and immediately defoliated within about a week. Completely brown leaves and just shed everything. And I was like, great, both my plum trees dead. But now as I'm looking at this here, lots of nice growth. So now I've got a plum tree that is starting to flower again in September. Again, into September, beginning of October. What kind of a plum tree is flowering? Apparently mine. Lest I forget, there's a blueberry right here. This is the Jersey blueberry, and I was really impressed with some of these blueberries that I got off of it. They're really tiny blueberries, which would be perfect for like muffins or pancakes or something like that. I was seeing these little tiny blueberries and going, great, I bought a crap blueberry. And then I tried them and they were awesome blueberries and they're really tiny and they're like, that's perfect for muffins and pancakes. And then I very quickly ate all of them and didn't have any to put in any pancakes or muffins, but there's always next year. This little guy right here, I was told is a calamansi, and I'm not sure how that's any different from my calamondin that's right over here, but they said this was a calamansi, and the nursery said that that is a calamondin. So I'm not really sure what the difference is. People on the interwebs, they say that it's the same thing. So I figured I would grow the calamansi into a tree and the calamondin into a bush, and then they're different, or at least mine will be different, or to be the same look different. But this little guy has gotten a bunch of new growth, started flowering all of a sudden. So once these things grow up just a little bit more, we'll be uh, picking and popping these things off because we want to focus on some root growth and foliage development rather than fruiting because I've got lots of calamondins over here. I'm pretty sure they're going to taste the same. So I don't even know what that one tastes like at least right away. The next blueberry we have here, I believe is the, this is the rabbit eye. This is pink lemonade right here. And these were some awesome blueberries. This is the one that had a mockingbird that was chasing other birds off and eating up all of these. And I, I, I just let him. It, it was really awesome to see this bird that was protecting my bush. Although he was eating, uh, I'd say half of my red blueberries off of that bush. And next to that, we have a, another big huge plot of awapui ginger which all this awapui ginger is going to be moved to a different part of the yard so that everything that's over here as far as ginger is going to be the edible kind and these are not edible they end up putting out the flowers with the goo inside and i don't see any on this side over here is one two uh i'm i think this is another one i don't know I don't, I don't know if that's another one or not and then there's another big old spot of it right here i'm pretty sure that this is all awapui though like 90% sure. I don't know. Sometimes I plant stuff and, and I forget. 
I'm pretty sure it is. After that, Awapui is a mission fig. This is a black mission fig, and this is the one, one of the only figs that has given me no figs, so I don't know what this thing's gonna end up doing, but this was the $2. They just were getting rid of it because the plant was broken right down here, and it was kind of twisted and, and bent over, snapped real good right there. Uh, she just gave it to me for like two bucks. But I'm a sucker for the discount bin, especially when I don't have it. And I really like Black Mission Figs, so um, yeah, I'll, I'll take a $2 Black Mission Fig any day. And here's that Calamondin right here. And we got some that are starting to turn yellow and soften a good bit. Yeah, a little soft, a little soft, not too soft, really hard. So we should have lots of Calamondins going here. I really hope they're like the ones that were last year, which were very orange tasting and super sour. It'd be awesome in some drinks. Make some really sour lemonade, add tons of sugar to it. Yeah, and speaking of lemonade, we have the Indian sweet lime right here. I just said speaking of lemonade and then start talking about limes. Genius. This lime tree right here has lots of nice green hard limes that are not ready for picking any one of them just yet. And that branch right there is probably going to have to get trimmed off. Under here we got another pair of limes, another lime, another lime, lots of limes. If this is the lime that I really hope that it is, it's the kind of lime that you can just slice it up in wedges and eat it and put it in drinks or season your food with it. Super awesome sweet lime. I also do know that there have been lots of caterpillars on this one. I did pick off a bunch of them. Yep, there's one right there. There's another guy. Hey buddy, I'm just gonna let you do your thing because I really like the butterflies that come out of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and let him have his snack turn into a nice pretty butterfly. Or at least I hope it's gonna turn into a nice pretty butterfly not be lunch for a bird. And now the first tragedy. Not all the plums made it. This is my really nice I worked so hard to get this thing into this shape. This was gonna be an awesomely shaped methylene plum. I even had the main leader curled over, going real good, opening up nice and big, huge wine glass shape being made right here. And then came the flood from the tropical storm that just, it killed it, it's dead. I'm just gonna leave it there because I am so sad about this tree. It's not gonna get replaced until next year. I've been going through and, and scratching the, the bark on it, trying to see if there's any green left to it. And I just, that's brown. Brown is bad, green is good. Uh, I am fairly confident this is just dead. So I'll be planting a new one in the, uh, in the spring. I'm just, I'm, I'm gonna leave it. I'm, I'm gonna remain hopeful that like, somehow this thing's gonna spring to life. This thing's like, I know it's kind of hard to see, but the tips of the branches that are up over here, it's easily going on like eight, nine feet tall right there at the tips. I mean, th this thing would have been big enough to be like, okay, maybe I wanna try and get some plums off of this thing next year and not just rip them all off and focus on development. It's, it's ready to go. And yeah, it's dead. I'm just lying to myself and I'm telling myself it's not dead, it's dead. But here's something that's not dead and that is a persimmon. Oh no, something got me. Oh man, I just ripped that one off. That's fine. I'll, I'll set it on the counter see if that'll mature any at all. Yeah, something got me good right there. So persimmons, this is a Fuyu persimmon, this little guy right here. Uh, and there's another one, two, three, four more. I don't know why I even let this thing fruit. Uh, I should have ripped all these things off. <laughs> it's just so pathetic looking uh, how few leaves and how little foliage actually developed in its first year in the ground. I, just don't do this. Let your fruit drop. Go rip your fruit off the first year. It is the most painful thing you'll ever have to do with your plants besides, you know, watching them die like my, my plum back there. Just rip the first year's fruit off. You'll get a much better harvest the second, third, fourth, for the rest of the tree's life. Rip these things off. But I mean, since I have it, I'm, I may as well set it on the counter, see if it'll ripen up a little bit, taste it. Got some more taro going over here in the corner. Got a tea bush going here. I'm pretty sure that tea bush is gonna have to get moved out to another area because we got a big old punting pole bamboo right here in this container. Yep, got the uh, nice little planter there to help contain that guy so that it doesn't go too far because this punting pole will end up spreading many feet over to the sides if I were to let it go unencumbered. And that first branch right there, uh, I'd say it's maybe nine, 10 feet tall. It's a little bit taller than the dead plum in the background there. I'm trying to not let that ruin this video. Mm. I, I'm a little sad. I'm a little bitter. Rain's supposed to be good. Rain killed my plum. Right next to our punting pole, we've got a 
uh, Austin blueberry right here. Did get a few blueberries off of this. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this thing. Uh, these were some really good, tasty, sweet blueberries. Actually, I'm pretty sure all my blueberries were really good this year. Even the ones that were small or I didn't get that many, they were all really good. And this one's no different. They got a few little bits of growth going here. Hopefully the fall weather gets this thing growing and it gets nice and big for the springtime to flower a bunch and give me lots more blueberries. Now this little orange tree right here is the one that I am really excited about because I'm gonna get oranges off of it. This is an Owari Satsuma and these are getting nice and big, a little bit of chill hours and this thing is gonna ripen up real nice. But again, we got lots of black sooty mold. I need to get some copper on this, get rid of some of this sooty mold. Ew, that's gross. Looks like we got a little baby caterpillar right here. I'm gonna let him do his little munchy munchy on that one because again, I like my butterflies. Although I don't like this guy right here. I don't know what you are. You're a leafy bug. You look like something's gonna eat. I don't like you. Over here on this other side, there's a lighter feeling orange here. You got a couple of them right down here. Uh, is that all that I have left on this one? Yep, looks like there's that one over there. So there's one, two, three, four that I got left. I'm pretty sure the last time I remember seeing this thing, it had a lot more than four. I don't know where they went. I don't see them. Where is this over here? Oh, hey, here I was thinking that I saw a bug or something move back over here and it's a little anoli. Can we focus on you? There we go. There's a nice little anoli. Yeah, he's looking right back at us. Hey there, little buddy. Keep eating my bugs. Keep going. You're doing good. Hey there, little guy. You gonna let me get a good shot at you? Oh, he's just a little baby. He couldn't be but a few weeks old at most. Yep, there's my finger uh, to the size of him. Yep, he's just a little guy. All right, let's leave that guy alone. He's doing good work for me. One of the things I am kind of surprised about is my Mason Bee home right here. Yeah, it looks like there's some of them that have been clogged up with the mud. I'm not sure what it is that's going on in here, but there's one, two, three, four. Looks like there's a fifth one right there. Yeah, there's some that's been making some nesting in here. Yeah, I, I hope it's not like hornets or something crazy because I went and sticking my finger in it. Down here underneath the Owari Satsuma, got a little bit of Asparagus still growing here. Hopefully that's going to take off. Uh, this is a this side over here. I've got a lot of weeds going. I don't know what these things are. Uh, they, they pull up real easy, but I can tell that there's some of the roots that are down underneath that just keep shooting up new stuff. And I say it's real easy to remove, but you still got to come out here with a rake and like scrape all the, the ground up and then they keep popping back. And I refuse to use any herbicides or pesticides back here in, in this part of my yard. And speaking of killing off things, it looks like, yeah, my American Beauty Berry here, uh, that's not pepper. That's supposed to be Beauty Berries. Uh, it, it drowned. I don't think these are edible. Yeah, it kind of looks like pepper though, doesn't it? But yeah, my Beauty Berry uh, drowned. It does not look good. And I don't think it's coming back from that one either. And see here, and then we got the, oh, that's Lomas Figgy right there. What did we miss? We gotta, oh, we gotta come all the way over here. It's like I missed half the yard. I cannot believe how many things I have now in this backyard. Here's another one of the papayas that's doing really well. Looks like we got some exposed roots down there at the bottom. They need to be covered up, but that papaya is doing really well. I'd say it's about two and a half, going on three feet tall. Leaf size is about that compared to my hand. Looks pretty good. Here's another one right here next to it, about the same size. Pretty close to the same size. Right there in the middle of these, you've got the... Oh, what did I want to call this? So this one here, because this was supposed to be the sunburst, but they didn't have any sunburst, so it's the Bambusa Dalekalekalda da, da, striata. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, it's like a sunburst, but it's got striated lines on it, and this one's doing a little hard to see when you get back on it, but it's going up about 10 feet tall. Eh, maybe only eight feet, nine feet. I don't know, I need a ruler. I need, I need, I need a human to like stand right here. I need to find a, a human measuring height thing person the ruby supreme guava that is a really nice looking guava branch kind of interestingly shaped uh, it looks like it's just one branch off of a tree which is probably you know how this thing was taken i think it was a uh, a grafting from another branch of one of these trees and it's still thinking that it's a, a branch and not a tree because it's very uh it's not very three-dimensional as you walk around it just kind of like opens up and it's a big old yeah like it should have been a branch that's been a, a Nice branch though. Very interesting way that it's growing here, but uh, very healthy, very happy. I don't know why I'm surprised at how many bugs are not on this. Uh, been spraying it off, hosing it off uh, for a while. It took a little break on hosing it off uh, almost daily. And yeah, it looks like all the 
the little white bugs, the soft, uh, what are those things called? Soft scale, whatever those things are, they get them on here. Oh, there's a little grasshopper. Hey there, buddy. What are you doing? But looking pretty good. Yep, still got a few little white spots on some of these leaves. That's good. It's good to see. Hopefully those aren't egg sacs. Gonna open up and give me a whole new batch of these little critters. Very impressed. Ah, a little bit of sooty mold right there. This guy's doing good. Super healthy. Looking good. Hopefully it'll give me some guavas uh, next year. And then there's the rosemary. This is the one that was over in the corner, not getting any sunlight and just slowly dying. It looks a lot better. Uh, I know this, this looks horrible, but uh, it looks a lot better than what it did when I first transplanted it over here. Uh, all the, the spiders look to be gone, which is good. It is putting out some new growth down here in some of these branches. I'd say it's possibly coming back. Uh, it looks like there's some more spiders in there. I uh, probably don't want to mess with that a whole lot because the spiders that were there, they were black widows. Mm hmm Yeah. A whole huge pile of them. Next are black widow infested or formerly infested Rosemary is an Olympic fig. Looks like it's going pretty good. It did have some little figgies on it, but then it dropped them all when we got all the rain. It looks like it may be trying to put on a few more fruits right here, but we're just gonna go ahead and pull all those off at this point. It's the end of September. If it's not fruiting yet, we ain't gonna let it fruit. It doesn't need to be wasting energy and putting out fruit right now. The formerly potted rosemary is again looking pretty good. It's starting to straighten out too because it was in a pot in a, in a window and just kind of growing all over to the side. And now we got some little growth going straight up. So that's good. The best looking loquat of the bunch. No, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, that, that loquat over there is really doing good. This one's just taller. This one's probably about four, four and a half feet tall. This one's actually a named variety and it is the gold nugget. I think that's what the tag says. Yep, gold nugget. And it's doing real good. Got some nice healthy growth going here. Everything took a step back when we got about 16 inches of rain in a week. So that's not good to get that much rain all, all at once for these, but it's doing pretty good. Lots of growth at each one of the branches. Love to see that. And right next to this other little papaya that we got here, it's maybe two feet tall. About a month or so ago, I planted some green beans and the center ones popped out first. And I had two different things I was doing with this one. The ones in the center were just fresh beans. They were sitting out on the counter or somewhere for a while and planted those and these that are on the outside at the same time. The ones that are on the outside of this ring, those I kept in the refrigerator for about a month just to see what cold stratifying some of the seeds would do. The odd thing that I found is that the ones that were on the counter sprang up real fast, kind of leggy, but they, they grew real quick. And I was thinking, oh great, you know, I cold stratified them and now they are like dead or something, I don't know. And then all of a sudden they just popped up and they look a lot thicker, a lot lusher, a lot more green, just better looking healthy green bean plants to start. But at the same time, they're a lot smaller. So it's gonna be really interesting to see over the next month or so, just how much different of a growth pattern they really have. I'll give you a long off shot here so you can see just how small the little guys are on the outside here and then how much bigger in the center they're growing up the pole here. At this point, there's a two or three foot difference in the not cold stratified to cold stratified. But again, the ones that are cold stratified, they look better. They look like a healthier seed producing growth. Kind of interesting, I thought. Now over here, what do we got? These are the sabas. So these are the sabas that are doing much better than on the other side of the yard. And it's kind of hard to get good look at some of these guys. So that one there is doing really well. And here comes the next band on the tropical storm. And it looks like I might have to take a little hiatus here because this camera, not waterproof. Maybe we should just hurry up. Let's just hurry. See if I can walk back here just a little bit so you can see just how tall these bananas are here. So that is a plum, no, that's a pear tree over here. So that's a pear tree, a fully grown pear tree. And that is my black tie bananas. The black tie bananas are as tall or maybe just a pinch taller than that pear tree right there. Those are some massive banana plants. At the top of the pseudo stem, I would say is about 10 to 11 feet at this point. And those leaves are going up uh, probably upwards of 20 feet tall. So that is definitely a big banana going right there. Right next to the really big bananas, we have the little bananas. This is the, oh, let me think of the name of this one. Oh, uh, what is the name of this? I, I'm, I'm drawing a blank right here. I'll, I'll try and put the name in the video in post-production. So uh, this is one that I got from uh, Dr. Friend at the VA. Uh, he gave me that one as a trade for a blue java. And here we got some apple bananas going real good. 
Might get some fruit off of that next year. Probably be the year after that, unfortunately. Got some lemongrass, and let me come back here, poke around, and the golden goddess bamboo. That's what I wanted to see. Yeah, I got a lot of new growth right here on that. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Lots of new growth poking up on that. And I may have to move this to a different area. I kind of expected to be able to make a walk path at some point, either uh, to the right or left, uh, hang on, right or left of this plant right here. And that being right in the middle is just gonna completely block off this side. So either I'm gonna have to redo my little walking path that I wanted to do back here, or it's gonna have to get moved. It's gonna have to go someplace. But it's going so good that I don't wanna just rip it up out of the ground and you know, stunt this growth or, or harm it in any way. It's doing good. I just don't know if I want it to do good right there. But right next to the golden goddess bamboo, we've got the ginger that we planted about a month ago. I kind of expected it to grow a little bit bigger. Right over here, uh, two of the three that I planted seem to be surviving. Looks like something munched on that one just a little bit, but that's okay. Because at this point, surviving is about as much as I can hope. Especially right up here with these bananas. Yeah, not very big clusters. But we do have some blue java bananas about to get uh, ripened up. Give them another few weeks and it should be good to go. And I really planned on over here on this other banana getting it stabilized just a bit better. Uh, so you saw how tall that one was versus uh, what's going on here. And yeah, these bananas right here, they're not looking so great. I'm not even sure why this thing tried to produce, honestly. Uh, but it's leaning over. I need to get something to prop that thing up. I'll try and see if we've got the energy and whatever to and try and find uh, some woods to prop it up. And then just kind of, you know, stand it up just a, just a little bit. Yeah. Nice and easy. Let it back down. Nice and easy. But at this point, I'm not even sure how good these bananas are going to be to try and eat because they are looking kind of sickly and, and sad and, and very few. And wow, it's really starting to rain. I should probably get inside. But back here on the other side of the bananas, got some uh, some turmeric and some more awapui that is going to have to uh, get chucked over to the other side. But it does have some flowers. There's one right there. There's another one back over here. Hang on a second. Let's just lift her skirt up a little bit. See any under there? Nope, no flowers. Ugh, spiders. So many spiders back here. Oh, big old spiders. Well, I think that's going to have to do it for this video because uh, it, it's starting to rain. I'm, I'm having to take shelter under a banana leaf. So keep those thumbs green, pests away, and know that you are appreciated. Oh man, how am I going to get out of here with this path all blocked like this? Oh, everything's all wet. Oh, where's the exit? Oh no, that's a big spider. 